think Val Kilmer was in it. I mean, it was a real gutsy thing that they did with this new technology. And, you know, if you, I don't know if they still have this, but uh, you, they gave you a helmet because, you know, it, the technology was such, but what was great was there were speakers in the helmet. Yeah. So you could hear the guy's thoughts. Oh, really? Yes. I mean, they really went all out for this. Well, and, you know, yeah. You know, the thing is, somebody, though, said uh, in, in one of the uh, kind of the, the reviews that I read, by the way, Patrick, we can't see you tonight. Patrick, uh, and, yeah, right. started up again. Rob's with us, by the way. I should add that to the, uh, uh, to the mix. Hello, Rob. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Anyway, what you what you were saying, what I said was, is that I, I, I uh, one of the uh, one of the pieces of literature I read about Sidorama is somebody somebody said a friend of mine said, "Well, why have you seen IMAX?" And he said, "I went to see IMAX. And I went back to my friend and I said, yeah, but you never saw Cinerama. Yeah. You know, but you never saw Cinerama. Cinerama. IMAX is simply a huge screen, and the 3D was excellent." But it's just nothing but a huge screen. It's not that immersive experience that you got with Cinerama. I don't know. The aerial stuff there was making my stomach really go. But here's a connection between I, I, I always thought, you know what I thought IMAX was? It's for all those people who like to sit in the front row at a movie theater. <laughs> well, I don't know. Nature Max is a whole different atom. But uh, there's a connection between 2001 and yeah. IMAX 3D. I mean, the real IMAX. You know what it is? What? IMAX and IMAX 3D was hmm. developed by Doug Trumbull for Sony. Uh, I, 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 did he? I think he did, yes. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, yeah. and I just like, oh, well, gee, you know, just like when Universal Studios had Back to the Future, The Ride, which was amazing. I was like, who made this? And as you walk out on a plexiglass placard, there's the credits, and right there, in bold type, directed by Douglas Trumbull, you know. I was like, oh, of course, you know. <laughs> well, you know what's terrible, though? I'll tell you what's terrible about what's happening with IMAX. Same thing that became the problem with, with Cinerama. They're now saying so-and-so in IMAX. Yeah. But they didn't shoot the film in IMAX. You know, if you go to see um, uh, Batman, the second Batman film, uh, uh, The Dark Knight, mm -hmm. Uh, he shot certain scenes in that picture. In fact, even if you look at the DV, the Blu-ray of it, you can tell the difference. There are certain scenes that were shot with the IMAX cameras. And whenever those scenes were on, man, that thing was wonderful. But the rest of the time, it was just a movie being blown up on a big screen. Yeah. And, I, it, and what they do is they do that with most movies today, is they just blow it up and say it's in IMAX, and it's not in IMAX. How do you know? Is there a way to know before you go, or do you have to go and see it and know it? No, I think it's just a big con job. They don't tell you, you know. I, you, have to, you have to be like me or like Mark or like uh, uh, old Miranda, for instance, I'm sure does, reads the trades to see which ones. Do, do you know what I do now? I have a thing here that goes to Wikipedia, and it lists every 3D film made, including the ones coming up and the ones that have just been released. Mm -hmm. And then it says how they were filmed. And if it says converted to 3D, I, I don't go to see it. Was you know? the, uh, was the, so, because I've only seen one 3D film and it was the recent Spider Man movie. Was that shot in 3D? Because well, that was amazing. I, I, I to would me. have to, I have to go to my, let me go to my file here. Wait a minute. It's a, it's a list of 3D films. Okay, here we go. Uh, the most recent Spider Man, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying no. Okay, like for instance, of the recent films, uh, uh, and I've seen, by the way, I have seen some conversions from 2D to 3D that are terrific. Mm -hmm. Cameron's Titanic is incredible, but he spent $20 million extruding that thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're laborious about it, fine, but if you're just cheap and want to say it's in 3D, and then I've gone to some films that were so bad and they were shot in 3D and I thought they had been converted. Uh, let me see here. I'm looking around here. I'm, uh, we're pad we got to get up to where we are right now. All right, there we go. Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters, Sharp. But these are all in alphabet, all in da daily order. Gravity, of course, was filmed in 2D. Would you believe? Uh -huh. um, um, but uh, let me see here. Where are we? Frozen. Now, Frozen. If you if you get to see that in 3D, beautiful. And, and any any. Uh, any uh, uh, 
animated, uh, computer animated film uh, is rendered 3D, so they all look pretty good. Uh, the Hobbit was shot in 3D, but where is Spider-Man? Come on, Spidey, where are you? I, uh, oh, here we go, Amazing Spider-Man 2, filmed yeah. in 2D. Wow. See, I would have never known. Did you guys see it? Did anybody see it? You didn't, I, you're looking at it like Mark's go, go, going. Well, I, I'm going the same way, too, because I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. You know, I, I maxed out on this. When you do a Spider-Man film and it's called, you know, Spider-Man and it's got Tobey Maguire and it's the first Spider-Man movie, of course you want to go see it. But when now they've done three of those, and now they call the new one The Amazing Spider-Man, and they're redoing the first movie. You know, remakes usually should be at least ten years apart, not three or four. You know? Yeah, well, I didn't like Tobey Maguire, so I thought yeah. this one was like, you know, was better. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the original Tobey Maguire one, yeah, and I yeah. didn't want to go see this one, but I was dying to see an IMAX, because it was in our, right here, it was in our IMAX 3D theater, yeah. and I said, "Let's go." And we—I thought it was just amazing. I'd never been before. Yeah. Well, sometimes it made me like the movie too. They can do it well. Uh, I've seen them do good, you know, the 2D extrusions. But I—I uh, I don't like it. I like it when they shoot with 3D cameras and and uh, approximate my eyes rather than recreate my eyes. Yes, uh, Mark. Look on that list, Alex. Was Invaders from Mars? I've I've heard conflicting stories. Well, you talking about the old one? Yeah. Was that made? Oh was God. that shot in three D? Uh, you know, I got to go all the way back. Uh, um, let me see here. I think I have to go all the way back here. Well, it does. This the this list doesn't go back that far. Uh, I thought it used to. I used to be able to look at the ones that were released prior to the current era. Uh, but it doesn't look like it. No. Oh, it's short films. Okay. And then see also list of 3D films pre-2005. Here we go. Um, I don't think it was, to tell you the truth. Because it was shit. I remember it was shot like it was. If that makes well, any here, sense. Well, you know, here's what happened to 3D. It's kind of like a woman who's down on her luck, so she turns a trick. You know, remember when 3D suddenly went porn and that's all that it was used for? The stewardess is in 3D. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking here uh, because they're all in alphabetical order. What was the film you asked? Invaders from Mars? Yeah. Uh, no. Interesting. No. Uh, International Stewardesses was in 3D. <laughs> I was a burlesque queen is in 3D. Hot air was in 3D. Uh, heavy equipment was in 3D. Uh, let me see here. Uh, that's about that's uh, Foxy boxing was in 3D. Uh, but uh, no, uh, I don't see anything to that extent. The Capitol Hill girls. See, that's what I'm saying. It suddenly porn just became a 3D thing. And um, the guy who came up with the process for 3D for the porn uh, was trying to sell his process to the, to the Hollywood studios, got on a helicopter at the Pan Am building to go out to JFK to catch an airplane. And that remember when the helicopter fell off the uh, Pan, uh, Pan Am building and everybody in it died? That guy was in it. Wait a minute. That was what's her name? That was what's his name? What's her name's husband? Yeah, some, uh, uh, yeah. Finlay? Finlay? Yeah, Roberta Robert Finlay's Finlay. husband, yeah. Yeah, oh my God, the fact. Yeah. Wow. And she was a porn director, if I'm... Still if is, well, supposedly still might be. M might be? Might be. Well, you, what do you do when you're a porn director? Ask your buddy. I mean, do you, no, I mean, I, I know because I used to do Midnight Blue, so I've been around porn directors, but... I'm just wondering. I mean, I, I, I don't have. He hasn't called us in a while, uh, but um, at least today. I mean, do you say, uh, cut, uh, Bob? Can you give me a little more emotion? <laughs> I, I don't think so. And they say porn actor and porn actress. Shouldn't it be porn reactress? 
because really that's all they're doing is reacting. I don't know. How you doing, Patrick? I'm just super dandy. Have you gotten all your work done? No, I, uh, in fact, Josh asked me earlier, um, what am I going to be on tonight? And I said, yeah, because I got no instructions all day today from the other partner that gave me the project to begin with. So my guess is, let's see, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock my time. So by the time we're probably in the middle of Jim's show, mm-hmm. I'll get an email from the guy and I'll be working this weekend on the project, so... Yeah. Whatever. And, uh... Well, yeah, and then I had my doctor's appointment this morning, and I beat all the old ladies to the handicapped spots. Uh, there's roughly... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's roughly 50 spots available uh, in the parking structure at the hospital for mm-hmm. cripples. Yeah. There's three left at 8 a.m. Wow. Really? What yeah. happens to all the other cripple people? That, well, I mean, I'm sure there's some legitimate cripples, but, um, you know, a lot of them are just old people that don't want to walk or, or overweight or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I, I was lucky to get a spot. That's why, you know, I was up at quarter after five and out the door at seven. You know, I know you're somewhat opposed to them, but I, I just think the idea of one of those little, uh, little uh, roundabouts or whatever would just be a great idea. I would love that. That's why I'm hoping to be like you someday. Well, as long as you don't take my spot, that's fine. Because, you know, I'll, and, and, I'll and girlfriend will still tell me I'm too lazy, you know. I'll just kick your ass out of it. Huh? I'll just kick your ass out of it. Well, the way my legs were feeling today, I figure I got maybe another two, three years before I can't walk. <laughs> but <laughs> Well, then, then you'll reach the pinnacle. You can be like me. I can be like you. Yes. Yes. But you're the king. Well, you can always be one of my minions. Yeah. yeah right. We can we can uh, kind of uh, uh, worship at your feet. Although, how we're going to get down there, I have no idea. But, yeah, you know. But if, yeah. You, you can just worship me wholly. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Fine. We only have about four people online right now. So if you want to call folks, fine. But I do know that what will probably happen last. Did you see what happened last night? We had we had a handful of people. We had like maybe four people, right? And then I think maybe I got up to five. So I'm feeling real bad. A half, fifteen minutes before we go off the air, everybody decides to start calling, and we finally have a full house. I don't know how that happened, why it happened, but that's what happened last night. So, but people had better things to do than call me on a nice, warm, beautiful night. Uh, and it was beautiful outside today. Yeah, uh, just, today was gorgeous. Yeah, I, I, I saw it all from the window. So anyway, wow. that being the case. Uh, you know, uh, Albert said he was going to talk about something and he couldn't get to it, and so I looked it up, and sure enough, the Pope has condemned the legalization of marijuana. Are you ready for that one? Who cares? He said he came out strongly against the legalization of recreational drugs, lending his voice to the debate. He told members of a drug enforcement conference meeting in Rome on Friday that even limited attempts to legalize recreational drugs are not highly, uh, are not only highly questionable from a legislative standpoint, but they fail to produce the desired effects. Wait a minute, marijuana is always to produce a desired effect for me. Uh, yes, Patrick. I, I would say to everybody that it piling on on him for this. Yeah. Um, didn't, isn't he the Pope that came out in favor of uh, allowing gays to live their lives and not condemn them and all of that? Yeah. I'd say give him a fucking break. I mean, this is the first Pope that made any headways into any sort of issues like that. So yeah. who fucking cares what he thinks about marijuana? Maybe the next one, we'll move, we'll, we'll move along on that one. Yeah. I say lay off the guy. You know. I agree with you. He's poor gay people. He, there's a lot of shit that. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
But do we say, hey, listen, you know, we're glad that you're uh, for, gay. he's not for gay people, by the way. That's not what he said. What he right. said is, who am I to judge? Well, well you, know. Uh, you know. That's what? a start. It, it's a start. No, no other pope would have said that. Exactly. Right. In the Catholic Church, that's as good as saying it. So, you know, I mean, right. Yeah, but, I mean, he but do we say. Headways. I say to everybody that's going to bitch about his opinion on marijuana, um, he could have very well stayed the same as the last several popes on gays and, mm -hmm. and said they're going to go to hell. So give him a break. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I just think that he should, uh, uh, it, it, where that kind of thing is concerned, it shouldn't even, that shouldn't even concern him. It's not a moral issue. Well, I agree. You know, I, you know, if he had an opinion about gays, that is a moral issue for, for a lot of people. You know, they consider that uh, morality or immorality or whatever. Smoking pot has anything to do with morals? I'm an immoral person if I smoke a joint. Uh, I, I, I mean, know I might get, I might get immoral after smoking it, but uh, you know. I I know people who think of it in a moral perspective, yeah. and that's the same with any drug. So, you know, and and you look into some of the more evangelical churches, they're going to be hardcore on drinking and drugs. So yeah. that yeah, that yeah. that's where that comes from. Well, I, I just, you know, um, here in the state of New York yesterday, they approved uh, 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 marijuana for medicinal use. But they've got so many provisos on it that it makes it almost impossible. You know, I mean, you've got to be, you've got to have cancer. You know, why, why do I have... What? No good. Uh, Glaucoma, no good. I, I, I didn't, I saw, I saw the list on television. I didn't memorize it. Depression. <laughs> That's no, a big one in, in California. No depression. depression. No, in, look in California, uh, 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 terminal hangnails will get you uh, <laughs> yeah. a marijuana prescription. My cousin has one. She lives in Los Angeles. Well, I don't think if they're going to say for medicinal purposes. <laughs> it is not up to a legislative lobby to say <laughs> what illnesses should get it and what illnesses shouldn't. Shouldn't that be the determination of your doctor? <laughs> You know, so, I mean, uh, I, I don't understand why, you know, I don't understand why I have to have terminal cancer before I can smoke a joint. That's, that's really what it's all about. Yeah. You know, if, if, if I had terminal cancer, that's when I'm going for heroin. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to see what, if I want to see what it's about, and probably it will take me out of my misery, uh, and, oh, but you might overdose. Yeah. yeah. And your point is, <laughs> you know. At least I'll go out with a smile on my face. Oh no! I decide if I ever get a terminal illness, just watch out. I'm hitting every drug dealer in town. I'm gonna try everything I never tried before. <laughs> there isn't much of that though, but I'm gonna try everything I never. I never tried heroin. What else have I never tried? Um, that's about it. Uh, I think I've tried most. Uh, gee, God, I've tried almost that's everything. Acid and all that stuff. Huh? Acid, LSD. Yeah, did all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Al, acid, same thing as LSD. How oh, okay. about you? How about you? Uh, 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 we haven't heard tonight from our our good friend uh, Josh. Josh, do you, have you do have you done any drugs? No, I don't. I don't do any of that. Uh, Is there a reason heroin or any of no, that? No, no, no. <laughs> stuff I'm, not, there, I'm, not, I'm not talking about heroin. I'm talking about like avoid. pot. No, I don't. I don't smoke marijuana. I don't smoke anything at all. I mean, have you done any of them uh, at all in your lifetime? You must have um, for pure curiosity. Nah. Not even for pure curiosity. Nah, don't mm. need it. Wow. Really? Because I was. I remember when I first uh, was going to try marijuana. I was always told that if you, it's a gateway drug, and the next thing will be heroin. Yeah, uh, reefer madness. Yeah, and so I bought. Uh, I, I bought some pot from a guy who was my wife's hairdresser. But what, hairdressers always seem to be the local pot deal, dealer, uh, women's hairdressers. And he sold us some pot. And um, uh, I, I, I remember smoking it and then starting to drive home and going, oh, shit, I don't think I can drive. So my wife had to drive. Um, and the next Oops. day he it's called up and he said, how'd you like it? And I said, oh, it was uh, terrific. I really enjoyed it. He said, would you like to buy some heroin? Wow. <laughs> and I Is went. The first time you got high? Yeah, the first time I got high. You want to buy some heroin? And I'm going, wait a minute. This is, this is too much like out of, as you say, reefer madness, you know. Um, 
We used to go to the midnight movie and watch that. You know, you know, I was involved in that, bringing that to the screen. Really? I was, I was here in New York doing my radio show, got to know a guy by the name of Keith Strop. And Keith Strop had started an organization called Normal. Oh, right, sure. The National the Association, Association for the Legalization Re of Marijuana. And I said, I'm all for that, you know, because I was smoking <laughs> pot at the time. And so I got to know him and I got to involved a little bit with being proactive with normal. And one of the things we did was we got this movie, which he, which Keith Strop had found, uh, and it had been, you know, just lying around as a curiosity and something to laugh at, called Reefer Madness. And we got the idea to start showing this at midnight's at the uh, St. Mark's Theater here in New York, and then taking the money and applying it to normal and to normal's. Uh, so it became a big fundraiser for normal all over the country. Uh, wow. We used to go to the Uniondale Mini Cinema and watch it. We used to get high while we did and laugh at it. Yeah, well, of course Great you laugh. Great movie to watch. Hi. You know, I, I, people it, it, people just didn't realistically ever get high. Look, it went that way. Most people didn't they go crazy. Insane. They didn't go looking crazy. They just fell asleep. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it made them look like they were insane. The way they would yeah. start and get all with their eyes and laughing hysterically and just crazy movie. Yeah. Let me see here. Jim Browning writes me, sorry, I'm uh, oh, 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 that was something back to, to, uh, to Albert for his apology for saying that Miranda was on tonight. Uh, no, uh, I, um, um, uh, uh, now you've never done it. I know that, Patrick, because you say you never smoke pot. No, I, no. I, I, I was getting high before anybody in my age group ever dreamed about it. I, I was going to say, you know, why, really? have, why have you never smoked pot? Do you have a stick up your ass? But you wouldn't know if you had a stick up your ass. So, you well, know. <laughs> the reason I never did any of it is because uh, with the surgeries I had as a kid, uh, I hated, absolutely fucking hated, the feeling of no control over... <laughs> My thoughts or my my anything like that coming out of the morphine and um, and painkillers that I just it, I never yeah ever did That's anything. Not pot, though. What? That's not pot. You never feel out of control or not in control. No, of your I'll tell you. Or... I, ne I never. Yeah, go ahead. Could convince me of that because I had already been to where the heroin area is and the you know coke and all that right. with as much morphine as i've had and and uh painkillers that i just to me it was there was no point in it yeah and um it's same as drinking i mean my old man was an alcoholic and i watched him uh do all sorts of stupid shit so that's why i don't drink well i've never been a drinker uh, uh my father was a drinker he was a musician and musicians were drinkers primarily because they used to work nightclubs and things like that. And then you'd always have somebody say, buy the band a drink. Mm -hmm. All right. So my father <laughs> was, a, uh, was, a, was a drinker. Hi to Daniel Hajek, by the way, who's with us, as well as Dan Meyer, who joined us a few moments ago. Hello, uh, Alex. Hello. Be hello. careful not to wobble your microphone because we'll blame you for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very careful and I'm smoking a pot right now. Oh, good. Oh, well, we'll, we we'll, go. we'll follow Perfect. your progress as the evening Perfect. goes on. Yeah. Um, you know, but the thing is that I, uh, uh, I, I never drank. Uh, my father, I had booze around, my, there's always booze around our house. My father said to me, if you ever want to drink, don't go out and have it with a bunch of kids, you know, uh, just right here, have, you know, just ask me and I'll, uh, I'll let you have a drink. And so because it was available to me, if I wanted it, I never wanted it. And I think maybe I started drinking when I was 18 because you weren't supposed to, okay? But as soon as I hit 21, I never drank again. I mean, I remember we used to go out to a pier in uh, Sausalito, California with a bottle of wine and pass it back and forth between us and see who fell into the water first. <laughs> uh, but uh, after I hit uh, 21, I didn't want booze anymore. And I don't drink. And people... Over the years, I've thought I was an alcoholic because, you know, I go to a party. Uh, do what, would you, what, what, what would you like? I go, Coca-Cola, please. And everybody thinks, oh, he's, he's you know, he's an alcoholic, alcoholic, right? Yeah. He's trying to be good about this. Oh, look who's joined us. A uh, woman who's doing her show tonight at midnight, yeah. Miranda Janelle. <laughs> Hi, Miranda. Miranda? 
Miranda. She probably got her thing on, thing on mute. Is her, is her thing on mute? Hello. Are you there, Miranda? Um, I, my, uh, I, I didn't reset my, my board from last night's show. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw it Skype muted and everything. I'll bet you you're not a pot smoker, are you? Yeah, I am. Oh, oh really? Yeah, really? Okay. Cool. Hey, yeah. High five. Look at how excited you got, Alex. Huh? Look at how excited you got. Well, no, I yeah. got excited because Miranda is... I said this tonight about you, Miranda, to, to girlfriend. And it's true. I said, Miranda may be the smartest woman I know. Uh, oh, I and, hope not. Huh? I hope not. N no, uh, you're, you're brilliant. You really are. I mean, you're... Is, is she not smart, guys? You can't she's, be a developer and not, yeah. and not yeah. be smart. And uh, uh, she, but we're not getting. Beat me. She's not that good because we're not getting a picture from her. Uh, well, she didn't beat she me. I work trivia, so. Oh, you're right. She, she, she is. is stupid because she couldn't win Star Wars trivia. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but no, anyway, I was just saying how bright you were, and so I kind of associated that that brightness that I that I attribute to you. And I may be wrong. Maybe it's just all a great charade, or as they say in France, charade. Uh, but uh, you, you just didn't seem, you seem like you'd be too level-headed to go for any kind of drugs, but you, you don't mind a pot. I, I would say that might be the exact reason why. Well, we know you're stoned all the time, uh, Dan. <laughs> all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Well, you know something? I, I, uh, uh, I had a friend here, guest, and he had some California stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, and And he brought it out, and everybody smoked, but I didn't. And you know why I didn't? Because I had to do a show that night. And yeah. I, what happens with me with pot is uh, it, 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 does, it just makes me yeah. uncommunicative and tired. And, That's and, the same and, as me. And, me yeah. too. So if I'm going to do it, it's got to be in a situation where I don't have to be social. And I yeah. guess doing a radio show like this, you got to be social. You probably smoke in the wrong strains. Really? Well, well, you know something? There are different strains. And if you go to Colorado, you can decide what kind of strain you want. There's the kind that'll perk you up. There's the kind that will sedate you, you know. Mm -hmm. I need to go. Uh, you know, but I, uh, who knows what I'm getting. It's going to sedate you a little bit, no matter what. You're not going to get super giddy. Yeah. Right. You know? Well, I mean, you. Well, I, I actually, I did get super giddy the first time I used it. But yeah, yeah, way back when you were a kid, yeah. Way back when I was a kid, two years ago, three oh. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you were a kid two or three years ago. <laughs> yeah. To the rest of us here. Three years ago. What? I have I I didn't start smoking till I was in my thirties. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I didn't have sex till I was in my thirties, so we're kind of even. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but it it, uh, uh, it, it uh, you know I uh, uh, what happened to me once I think I've told the story before is I was doing a show in uh, Minneapolis, and I smoked a joint before I went on the air. I figured it couldn't hurt, right? And I went on the air, and um, somebody was saying something, and my answer to him was, "Oh fuck, I don't know." Oh. <laughs> and then I then I hit the button on myself because we had a delay, and I said to myself, "This is the last time I'm getting stoned before I go on the air," and so I, you know, um, never got stoned before I went on the air, uh, and. If other people were smoking around me, that was fine, but I would never kind of get in the cloud with them. However, I did. I'll get, I'll get to you in a second, uh, uh, Dan. Um, I, I think I've told the story. <laughs> we had a recording of it, actually, and you, you've yeah, heard, heard it. that. You've heard it already. Yeah. Um, uh, where I was interviewing the Grateful Dead, and uh, I, was, I, I had talked to my radio station about the fact that I was having on all these very hip people, and I said, what if one of them pulls out a joint and starts smoking. They said, you don't have to stop them. Those were in the days when you could smoke in a radio station, you know, smoke cigarettes. And he said, uh, cool, um, if, you, if that happens, you're not legally bound to stop them. You, can just, you just can't participate and you can't initiate, right? So I interviewed, the one night I had on the Grateful Dead, six of them out of the seven. Pigpen wasn't there. And they were, we had uh, these tables, and they were in a, 
in a, in a semicircle around my desk, which was at the front of the semicircle. And they all started lighting up smoking joints individually and then making sure they were blowing the smoke <laughs> in my face. <laughs> And if it, and you can probably hear if you, if you listen to the whole interview, uh, Rob. You can. Yes, you can. Toward, towards the end, do I sound stoned okay. out of my mind? Very different from where you started out. <laughs> <laughs> just laid back. I More would, late. You were very laid back back then. Well, just my whole. Well, yeah, that was the kind of thing where you got really close to the microphone. You talk like this in the radio. They say, "Hi, uh, this is Alex Bennett." Just before midnight. Just before I go into a coma. Uh, you know, I mean that's how you used to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, so you always kind of did it casually. If you listen to the Le John Lennon Yoko Ono interview. Yeah. Same kind of. Thing. Uh, although I did hear some audio of me in San Francisco uh, about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that somebody put up on his website, and I sound the same then like I sound now. There was a po point in which my voice stabilized. <laughs> But anyway, the point I'm making is that's, that's the only time I remember really being that wrecked. And the other time I remember being completely wrecked, and I've told this story too, was I was um, having dinner with a friend of mine, and she had just come back from Ibiza, Spain. And in Ibiza, they had these pills they sold over there called Dormadinas. They were little blue pills, and they came 10 to a pack. And what they were were quaaludes. But they were sold over the counter in Spain. So because they were sold over the counter in Spain, you could zip them right through customs. What's this? Dormadinas. They sell them over the counter in Spain. Okay, go on. So she had some Dormadinas, and Dormadinas were good for a couple hours, all right? So it's like 8 o'clock at night. And uh, uh, I, I'm, uh, we're eating dinner. She says, would you like a, would you like a, 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 a what do you call it, a Dormadina? And I said, sure, I'll look at my watch. I said, I don't go on until 2 o'clock in the morning. That's in those days, you may remember, Rob, where they actually did radio shows at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah. And there was an audience for them, unlike this. Anyway, so I, I, um, I, we're, we're, we're about an hour into dinner, and she says, Dormadina working for you? And I said, no, it isn't. She says, you want another one? And I look at my watch, and I go, well, they last about two, two hours. And yeah, I still ain't got time. Sure. Uh, give me another one. And she gives me another one. And uh, about a half hour later, she says, are you, uh, are you feeling it? And I said, no, I'm not feeling anything. So she says, you want to try one more? I said, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess so. I took another one because I'm looking at my watch, and I still got like four hours before I'm supposed to be on the air. Okay. Now, we're dr I'm driving to work, and I think I may have even brought her to work with me. Uh, and yeah, in fact, I know that I did. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm straight as a rail. She says, are you high? I said, no, I'm not high. So we get to the station. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I get on the air. I start doing my show. At 3 o'clock in the morning, my guest shows up, and it's Jack Nicholson. Wow. <laughs> All right? Oh. And Jack comes on, and we are sitting in a big studio with a desk where he's on one side and I'm on the other. And all of a sudden, in the middle of my interview with Jack Nicholson, the three Dormadinas decide to hit. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. And I can't. There are like three Jack Nicholsons. You know, it's the most stoned I've ever seen, Jack Nicholson. But it wasn't him. It was me. <laughs> and we go to a commercial break. And I look at Jack. And I say, uh, Jack, I said, I, my, I, am, I am really fucked up. And he says, in that Jack Nicholson way, you look at pal. <laughs> <laughs> and then he took my girlfriend off to the bathroom and helped her a little bit in a certain, not a sexual way, a, a pharmaceutical way. Uh, huh. But uh, he, uh, there that, was that was Jack Nicholson. So I, 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 and uh, 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 yeah, but he knew that I didn't usually get stoned on the air because he had done a show once before with me, and I was completely straight. So. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, that's, those are my, those are my, but those are about the only two times I can tell you that I was actually high on the air. Have yeah. you ever run your board or do you always, have, you always had an engineer? Uh, I have had situations where I would run my board, but the commercials were run from somewhere else. Ah, you know, cause that was my problem with, you know, just doing music. 1979 was the first and only time I said, well, I'm going to get high and try to do a show. Maybe I'll be more creative. 
The problem was I couldn't. I was hitting. I just hitting wrong buttons. Uh, you know, we had get remote get starts sloppy. for the turntables, and I hit off instead of hitting on for the next one in the middle of a segue. And I vowed there I would never ever do that again, and I never have. Yeah, well, that, that, and that's the reason why I didn't get high. The only time I started getting high, I started doing coke back in the uh, '80s, and I would do coke on the air. Uh, yeah, cause uh, that's, because that's that's a clean. It, well, it's a different. Well, it, it amped me up. You know, yeah, you know, right. But uh, it didn't. It didn't. It, it, it didn't slow me down. Well, most of the drugs right. slow you down. That one. And I. But I never did speed. Never liked speed, because I. You know, I. It would grind my teeth to powder. Right. Um, and my. Um, I'll tell you the one drug that I was amazed by, though. I had a I had a girlfriend who wanted me to try it, and so I did. And she said, uh, "I want you to try ecstasy." Oh. Now I, had ne I, I, you know, I, I didn't know what to think of ecstasy, and I started looking up the literature on ecstasy before I tried it, and all the literature said that it wasn't particularly a bad drug. It wasn't a deleterious drug to you as a human being. Uh, uh, that for some reason it was, it was not a problem, and so I tried it, and I thought it was actually pretty much a marvelous drug, especially to have sex on. You know, because number one, everything feels good. Oh, let me touch your face. Let me try. And, you know, your tactile senses go into play. But mm -hmm. I didn't find ecstasy to be a particularly dangerous drug. But I never did it while I was on the air. Uh, yes, um, Miranda. Did you know that they're using uh, uh, MDMA to treat uh, post-traumatic stress disorder? Really? Yeah. There What's is, MDMA? It was, it, uh, ecstasy. Ecstasy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I, I saw a program on it. There, there, there's this uh, trial going on using MDMA to treat PTSD, really? and now mm. sound like a uh, pharmaceutical commercial. Yeah, well, yeah, but no, but I mean, well, the thing is that most of these drugs, I mean, marijuana, for years, uh, they did studies in Canada, for instance, and they found that it was great for uh, for glaucoma. You know, it's and it's great for a lot of the different things we're using it for. That it was a decent medicinal drug, and uh, I just don't know what the argument has been over marijuana. Oh, one of the things about the New York thing, you can't roll it and smoke it. You have to vape it. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it, I mean, come on, was, I, you know, on a not smokable form, so you could have edibles. Um, but you could, I, I thought it was that you couldn't do loose leaf. You, you couldn't do loose leaf. You have to do, uh, do some... I guess this would require, if you were going to vape it, probably would require uh, manufacturers to create uh, capsules or whatever. Uh, those those uh, do exist, there, but there's also, uh, there's also leaf vaporizers as well. Really? Yeah. 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 Uh, you can... Oils. Um, I, I've heard of people... Mm. Uh, using uh, some of the waxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And drug geeky with Miranda. <laughs> drug geeky. Getting, getting, <laughs> getting <laughs> goofy with, wow. with, with... Oh, look oh, at this. Look at her. Oh, there we go. There she, ah. Don't bogart it. Come on. Yeah. She's only That's three around. years into this, and now she's doing it right here. I was actually hoping the smoke would blow well, into well, the camera. Well, you know that tonight yeah. is the night I'm running the video. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. so, so you're running. under I arrest. I thought about that before I did it. <laughs> the cops are, oh, it's legal there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have medical over there? Do you have a medical uh, prescription? Mm -hmm. Or whatever it takes. You do. Oh, what's, your, see, you know, what's your or, disease? What's your disease? Yeah, what's, uh, I have a very, very high pressure job, extreme anxiety. Oh, extreme anxiety. Oh, yeah. man. See, in, so in, in New York, we wouldn't yeah, be able to get too. it for extreme anxiety. You know. I stopped smoking a couple months ago and then had a massive panic attack that crippled me for about a week. Oh, so really? I just decided it's yeah. easier. Uh, to keep can you work, Miranda, and do that? I prefer not to. Yeah. But you can? My friend, a buddy. It's, it, it depends. You know, I, I, I don't work on client facing work. I usually do, you know, a lot of what I've done for midnight movie nights. Um, Come on over okay. here. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't but not, not client facing stuff. I, I, I keep that completely. So I, I don't do any yeah. medications while yeah. I'm on client work. Look who's here. My friend, uh, Buddy, he's been out with his wife 
seeing our lovely, lovely town. We were talking about pot. Ooh, I, yeah. just, I just had me some. Huh? I just had me some. He just had him some. <laughs> he, he, well, he's a musician, and it's they love the ganja. They love ganja. Pass it around a little bit. Yeah, pass it around. Well, she was she was just smoking. We were, we were talking about the fact that in New York they're, they're they legalized yeah, but they're not, but they're not. I mean, you got to vaporize it. You can't smoke it with a, a joint. You 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 got to. There are only like about four different ways in which you can uh, things that can be wrong with. Somebody look it up if you got a computer there. Uh, there's some. Sounds really stupid. Yeah, it's really Not stupid. Us have computers, <laughs> yeah, none of us have computers here. I, oh, none of you have computers there. No. I see. <laughs> We're on telephone, dude. <laughs> yeah, yep. right. Um, uh, uh, I mean, you can see my video. Uh, what do you mean? Wait, what's what? going on here? We got Miranda, Never Dan. Mind. Huh? Uh, you, you have just the names get up there. closer into the mic. You, ha you have the names there. Uh, yeah. Miranda, Miranda Dan, Dan, David, David, Josh, Josh Mark, Mark, Patrick. Patrick. We got a full house here. Yeah. I'm loving yes. this. Uh, uh, and 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 David, I was going to ask you, uh, uh, how do you how do you smoke it? Do you roll it or do you vape it? I roll it, of course. You roll it. Yeah. I like rolling it because I consider that part of the social ethic. It is. It's, it's part of the ritual. I Huh? It's, it's part of the paraf the, yeah. I love the paraphernalia. Yeah, just no all of that is yeah. just awesome. I have a bong, uh, yeah. and I've enjoyed uh, marijuana through bong. I've, the vaporizer to me is more like enjoying it uh, uh, as an edible. It 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 kind of right. has the same effect on me as eating, you know, like a half a brownie or something like that. Where if I smoke, you know, ingest the the smoke and really get a great hit of that THC. It's a different effect for me. I don't know about you guys. What do, what do you think? Miranda, chime in. Um, <laughs> I, I prefer a small little personal pipe. You, so. you like it, but you smoke it with a flame. You don't vaporize it. Uh, no, yeah, just... <laughs> No. Sorry, Jim just sent me a message saying five bonger. Well, well, welcome, well, welcome to, 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 to Pot Talk. Do you know they're starting oh, going to start a High Times channel on Sirius? Really? Oh, good. Yeah. Well, no, they're, no, they're about. Uh, hey, hey, Sirius, uh, the 1970s called and want your radio station back. <laughs> Come on, when was High Times relevant in the last 20 years? Uh, Patrick. Yeah, uh, just speaking of bongs, it reminded me, um, I have a friend of mine uh, who was a uh, chemical engineer. He's homeless now out in San Diego. Um, that's a whole different story. But anyway, the reason I bring up his chemical engineering is the guy is brilliant, or at least was, right. and went through all of the science courses and all of that shit smarter than I could ever dream of being. And he had heard about smoking uh, and using snow as a filter in a, in a bong. So he decided he was going to put water in, put it in the freezer for a little while, and then try that as well. Right. What happened to water when you put it in the freezer? It freezes. freezes. It, freezes. Right. Yeah. it expands. It expands. <laughs> oh, it oh. Blew up. Now, see, wait a minute. Hold on a second. That's why I said you were the smartest woman I know. <laughs> see, you said, I would have said <laughs> freeze, and, was, and, and you said expand, and that was the right answer. And it, and it blew, and the the glass, right answer, blew the and glass. And it was a $350 bong oh. that he had no. uh, from... I guess it was uh, uh, South Africa or something. And what happened is he put it in and he fell asleep and he woke up to the explosion in his uh, freezer. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, well, at least it was well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me, let me say this first. Anybody who paid $300 for a bong is an idiot. Yeah. I, I so, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, he, the I, bar, I when I would go over to his place, the pipes and the bong that he had. Yeah were gorgeous glasswork. I mean, just, they were works of art. And that's what he bought them for. That was like his his geekiness, Miranda. Uh, yeah. You know, he would collect them. I like that, geekiness, and, Miranda. You know, Very yeah. good. Well, she has like a show that. called Getting Geeky on oh. her channel. Yeah. I so, that. I mean, uh, $350 in little shards in a freezer. Oops. Because the scientist forgot that water, water expands at the freezer. I've got a similar story, but not pot related. Um, 
uh, I have a very great friend, very eccentric great friend, who um, uh, one night um, I was opening the refrigerator, and there on the top shelf was a corn cob pipe. A oh, pipe. We used, at General time, MacArthur had no, passed he, by. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He at this at this uh, juncture, he was not uh, smoking marijuana. Yeah. Smoking tobacco. Yeah. It was it was strictly for pleasure in smoking tobacco. So I said, David, why in the world do you have a pipe in the refrigerator? Oh, Bob, cool smoke. Seriously, cool smoke. <laughs> really? <laughs> he really believed that he was going to have a cooler smoke by putting his pipe in the fridge. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, uh, uh, what I, people I, uh, will do. And you, this you, guy was brilliant. Year, years ago, a woman, uh, thinking it was a joke, bought me a, 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 a pipe to smoke the pot in. Because I always liked oh, smoking smoke in a pipe. the pipe. Like it was that. an easy way. You know, it was a fast way. I didn't have to sit there and roll it. Although I, I do roll a good joint. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it was a, a penis pipe. Oh, so are you, are you, are you and, and, smoking and the balls? No, you're the, smoking the, the tip. Smoking, and you know, smoking. to this day, I'm not too proud to use it. So I, I'm happy to say that. Uh, We've got a lady <laughs> present here. She's killing know. me. Uh, no, it, believe me, I'm not going to say she's no lady, uh, but she's uh, she's a she's she's tough. She has. Lady I'm digging the glasses, that's all I can uh, say. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Do, do you realize yeah. that wearing glasses, and Patrick, this goes for you as well as, who's this gentleman? That's, right uh, that's David Hatton. David, okay. Yeah. And down here we've got him. Anywhere there's glasses. and, and Yeah. We have a rather ocularly impaired audience here. Guaranteed it's, at least 22 <laughs> points on your IQ. You put the glasses it, on. Really? Yeah. It, yeah, makes yeah. it look yeah. good. Intelligence. I feel smart compared to me. You know, no glasses. I look like a complete. But then moron. again, did, did Superman look smarter when he had glasses on? <laughs> yes, did, of course. Did he look smarter? Clark Kent, way smarter than <laughs> Superman. Now you know who's joined us uh, tonight, and he's from. Yeah. Where are you? They're down in Nashville, right, uh, Phil? Oh no, his microphone isn't working oh, again. Same oh. thing, Miranda. You gotta oh. tell him. Miranda, tell Same him. Thing. Tell one, him one what, moment. Okay. One moment. It's in the Skype preferences. Everybody say something nasty about Phil while he can't reply. Skype <laughs> Look at this microphone. She's. I know she's got a better microphone than I do. Dick in fact, Cheney. I was talking to, to girlfriend Asshole. tonight about allowing me to buy a microphone like that. That's a that's a real statement though. Look, yeah. and look, she's got the pop screen. But, but on listen, it as listen. Well. I'll show you what these guys do. Ooh. Listen, listen, listen to Dan. Dan, say hello. Right. Dan. Hello. How are see, you? See how good he sounds. Yeah. Uh, listen to uh, Josh. Josh has a great. Oh, he's got head. the headset. He's doing. Well, a... he, so does uh, Dan. Listen, yeah. say hello, They're Josh. They're doing a Britney Spears on us. I'm loving it. Yeah, the Britney Spears Just, thing. Hold on a second. Let let, let Josh say hello Josh. so we can hear how he sounds. Chime hello. In. See, he sounds great. Mark Thorner doesn't have a microphone, but he's he's close to his computer. Say hello to Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey. Yeah, a lot of people would think they're in the same room with me, and of course, Rob has his own studio down there. You yeah. see, Rob with his yeah. studio. Yeah. And hi, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey there. How's it going? See? Listen to that tone. That is like... Yeah, but look at that microphone. Yeah. I, I can get that tone, too, if I can get it right here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, oh, uh, can we put Jim on? One, two, three, four, six. Oh, yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, uh, hello this, to... Is this a full house, Alex? This is a full house. Okay. We have a full house now. Oh, and, but wow. one guy is uh, Marcel Marceau. Um <laughs> Have you got it working yet? Yeah, but we're on video, Phil? though, Phil. You can dance around and stuff. What should he do, Miranda? Tell him. It's, well, yesterday it was in the Skype preferences that he had to go through and adjust the microphone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But so, I yeah. love the look on his face. We, and people, people, you can actually see Will this tonight Phil, when we put Phil, the... Yeah, he's if, Phil, if, Phil, if, if you go watch him. us online at the live stream... You can actually Phil, see. You're Phil, you're not. We're not hearing you, pal. No, no, we're not hearing you, but we're seeing you, and that's that's good. You're to a know. handsome young man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't use that term loosely. <laughs> oh, we the, got the, it. Now the thing on. is, when Phil starts talking, you'll be you'll be glad he. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, is he a Republican? Is he yeah, a oh, is, is he? He's a Republican. He's a terminal yeah. Republican. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he looks I like one. I yeah. can't I'll tell you what, him. though. I I don't agree with his politics, but he's great to have on because the other night, Phil, you were outnumbered and you just hung in there, man. You well, hung I, in there. I was going to say that. this tonight to Phil when he called, uh, but he can't reply to me, so. 
you know, uh, but but I do appreciate him. I ho- uh, he takes a lot of abuse at he our did. hand. Patrick wasn't uh-huh. around. And, and he, he, he he just he does hung a, in there. A good job of it, uh, of putting up with the abuse and uh, which we heap upon him. Yeah. So is Patrick? Uh, is he going to go visit his buddy Scott Walker in prison? Oh yes, that's the, I wanted what? to mention that. They have tonight. wheelchair access in the prisons there. It, and uh, uh, tell tell people what's Wisconsin. happening to the guy you you love the most, Scott yeah, Walker, the Scott wonderful Walker. governor of uh, Wisconsin. Well, there, there's criminal complaints that there were misuse of funds. Misuse. <laughs> 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 Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They've been trying this for approximately two years. Uh, it's been since the recall that he won, so they're still trying. And the the funny thing to me is, he's up for election this year. Yeah. And um, they haven't gotten anything in the last two. Um, there was a uh, a stay put on the. Uh, the whole thing about two weeks ago, and then now it's lifted, and then, of course, the charges are being reinvestigated, but um, it's all accusations right now. And of course. As, as I've always said uh, to friends here in the state, because I've got some uh, very, 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 very anti-Walker friends, Mm-hmm. Notwithstanding my own family that can't stand him, no. but I've said to them, if in fact he's found guilty, I'm not going to sit and defend the guy then. I mean, because I'm pretty much, you know, if, if you've fucked up and, and you're convicted of it and it's proven that you did it, well, I'm not going to sit and say you didn't, but until it's proven... Um, I'm still a big supporter. Well, uh, I look, uh, I would be in that camp because I've always been fair that way. And I've always complained when yes, people uh, are even indicted that people then act like they're guilty all the time. You know, I'm, I'm one of these people who still say whoa, whoa, whoa. that, oh, yeah, uh, there's Rob with his cat. Oh, O.J. Simpson. I, 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 no, uh, I, I, yeah. to this day I say about O.J. Simpson, he was not found guilty in a court of, of law, yeah. and so therefore I have to yes, treat was. him as an innocent individual uh, it, it, because he was never found guilty. But with a modicum of suspicion. With, well, all you right. can have a modicum you, of suspicion. He was found guilty of the... the the, the Look, gun and whatever. He would have never gotten what he got in Nevada if it wasn't a bunch of people saying, "Let's finally get this guy." Yeah, you probably know? right. He was. He isn't in jail uh, for that. He's in jail for the murders and and. and uh, uh, oh, are you are you on now, uh, Phil? I think I think I yes. solved yes. the Republican conspiracy against me. No. <laughs> oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Can Meyer has finally learned against you? has finally yeah. learned how to use a computer. Some of my best friends are Republicans. Hey, you know, uh, it's a Mac, and uh, 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 it's Mac and me. It, Macs are the simplest thing to, in the world to use. They're, well, I, even when I put the glasses on, I listen, need a hundred more IQ listen, points to use it. The twenty I in the glasses yeah. isn't cutting it. I mean, I'm even getting Jim. Hi, Jim. <laughs> He's waving. He's waving. Oh, oh uh, it's radio, uh, Jim. No, it, it's too. it's TV night. We're on we're on 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 live stream Can as I well. Can I just say one thing? What? Two people get it new. Actually, David's is okay. Phil, you know some of the tax dollars that you've been you know complaining about us taking from you. Yeah. Spend a little of that money on a nice camera. You're a handsome young man. Put a nice camera on this. No, he has, I'm he has on a, the road today. He has a better uh, camera at home. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. On the road again? Yeah. No, he's got... He's, he's got he's I'm got in a good, uh, Nashville. He's on, he's on the road. Which what are you is, doing in Nashville, Phil? He's going to a wedding. I'm here a for wedding. a wedding. Oh, okay. Wow. Not he's Mark. breaking away yeah. from a wedding to be with us. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, what was I going to say to Jim? I forgot what I was going to say to Jim. Oh, I'll do, it, it doesn't matter, does it, Jim? Jim and I every no, now and then. Matter. Every now and then. I mean, we were doing this last night uh, 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 while you were on Miranda. We were talking to each other on Skype, and and finally I said Thanks to him, to "My show, Alex. What? Thanks for listening to my show. No, I listened to it today. You know, I mean, I, I, we were and we were doing last night. We were checking in. You, you, uh, right. uh, well, yeah, we were playing you to each other. Yeah. 
In fairness, <laughs> he you are Just on his list of uh, things to listen to. But we've to. done that, and you've done it with him, too. And I just said, you know, we just should start our own show of, like, the three of us just talking with each other. You know, <laughs> why not? Because yeah. we, we go all why over not? the place, and sometimes it's just purely dull, and sometimes it kind of gets interesting, yeah. you know? Uh, and not that we don't love the citizen panel, but it's just, you know, we could do this, like, at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I could get to sleep at 4 Anyway, <laughs> uh, anything you want to uh, add to anything we've been saying tonight, Phil? Like about uh, if you have you ever smoked pot? I'm sure. Phil is now Try frozen. Right now. Frozen, Phil. Frozen, and he's gone. Oh no! Damn, damn it! Uh, He'll call I back. He got his mic working. And... Well, he got his uh, mic working. Man, <laughs> I finally had a good question for him. You know, he's, did you hear him? Did you hear him blast the Mac there, uh, Miranda? He, he said before that he never did, never smoked pot. He never smoked pot. Oh, yeah, okay. he said it before. Now, so and you figured that, right? Oh, David? absolutely. Yeah, because and you... he needs to smoke pot. It's his problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. Yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 look, uh, how often do you smoke pot, David? I'm afraid to ask He's this. Frozen one. Oh, every every Friday. Oh, no. Every Friday. Every Friday night, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I have... just I just had my second one tonight. You st- nice. I, I had a chat with the Duke. Huh? I had a chat with the Duke just uh, moments yeah, ago well, before he, I came well, here. You really love your doobies. I do. No, you Duke, love, you love... it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I mean, you do it about <laughs> once a day, don't you? No. No, no not On vacation, much? I do. Any, any night I have to sing, I do not smoke anything until after. Because the of the show. throat. It dries your throat out. Like wow. you can't sing. That's why you need to vape. That's why you need to vape. You don't get this. Yeah, you don't. I like vaping. I do vape from time to time, but I find the high not to be as uh, enthralling. Yeah, I found when I was a Jew the high not to be so enthralling. Any Jew I knew who wore a high, I couldn't stand. <laughs> I just couldn't stand them. <laughs> That you knew there was something wrong with them, you know. We, I don't think we have many Jews here tonight, do we? Well, we've got Mark. Mark Mark's Jewish, right, Mark? Yeah. He went. He 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 feels he doesn't have to say anything. He just look at me and go, <laughs> mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. And uh, Jim, of course, big Jew. Uh, <laughs> Jim Browning, yeah, huge. Somebody made a somebody made a business cards for me when I was at Live 105 in San Francisco, and it said Alex Bennett, and then as my title, Bad Jew. Bad Jew. Yeah. So, uh, I, that and, makes me anyway, curious. Get, how it, many how many Jews are in Revelstoke? Yeah, we haven't heard back from <laughs> uh, from uh, from Phil. Hmm. Oh, there he is. Here he comes. Here he goes. Okay, He's back. Phil, Phil, are you there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know how in a hotel you got these magic fingers, you put the quarter in the bed and it yeah. massages you? Yeah. Well, the disco the, started. This hotel has the magic fingers of internet. Oh, I see. And uh, even though it's complimentary, it's only for a 24-hour period. Yeah, well, so you know, my period was up. Com- <laughs> oh, oh re- really? Yeah, so I had to re-register. You had to re-up. You oh, had wow. to re-register? Yeah. Yeah, re-register by internet connection. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Well, anyway, That's... we've been talking about a lot of things here, and one of which, of course, have you ever smoked marijuana? Look at this. He's a pothead. Look at this guy. The last yeah. time I smoked he... marijuana was at your house. R- really? Yeah. W- where? In New York? No, in uh, Sausalito. In Sausalito. Sausalito. No, okay. That was the last time you ever smoked pot? I was a cop for twenty years. Well, you you were you weren't a cop. Well, you, you were, were like a deputy pot. or you, you something. Were, you yeah. know, you well, were no, you were I, like when in the old west people say, "Let's get a posse together." Yeah. <laughs> you know, you were well, like part of a uh, posse. If, if they would have drug tested me, they would kick you out. So uh, I was clean. Uh, I, oh, I see. Well, I mean, look, you know, what well, well, I did it seven years ago. I mean, it's still in my blood. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, actually, it I've been retired for almost long. ten and. Uh, uh, but, uh, no, but I haven't had. Uh, but you were part of the posse. You were part of the lynch party. That's what you. Oh, were. absolutely. We were looking for Democrats. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we were talking about that. We were also talking about Scott Walker now uh, being. Uh, have they? They haven't charged him yet, right? No, it, it, it's still all. Um, nothing 
It's speculative. It, it, it's all um, accusations and um, what's the right word? Um, Innuendo. Smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Speculation. Well, it's they've been speculation. That for two years, and that's that's the thing is, in two years they haven't been able to find anything and and hold anything. Yeah. So it it you know somebody like me, I'm sitting back there just waiting, um, almost sarcastically just to go ha ha, because mm -hmm. they keep trying but they haven't found anything, and um. So right now, it's, it's all accusations, well, and, and like I said, if, if they find something and, he, and he's found guilty, I'm not going to sit and defend him. Right. Um, because then he did something criminally wrong. Right. But if he didn't, and they can't, I mean, it's like the recall. They were recalling him. I mean, uh, I, I quite frankly hope he is guilty. He does go to prison and get some sphincter exercise. <laughs> Ouch. 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 Or they could just make him governor of Illinois and fucking fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. They don't have a I don't think they've had a governor in Illinois who hasn't wound up in jail lately, have they? And yeah, they're about oh, due. Man. What is about three of them? Yeah. yeah. And he's, great he's hair. really close great so hair. he could commute. Who has great hair? The guy who's in jail. The uh, governor. Uh, oh, the governor. Yeah. What? Well, I had him. Blagovic or Blagojevich. I got to tell you, Blagojevich. I, had, I, had him, I, I had him on my show. He was a fun guy. I had my sh I had him on my show when I was on Sirius XM. Really? Can I say this? Hello. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, there's there, there, there's wow. the broad. What? Uh, <laughs> What, what was she carrying? A teddy bear or something? Oh, no, she went down to the lobby. She got apples and water oh, and batteries. She uh, went down to the lobby. Anyway, anyway here, 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 what's going here, on down there, Phil? Hold on a second, everybody. We're, we're going crazy here, and we're all jumping in on each other. Now, I interviewed Blagojevich. Blagojevich. It's a, it's a Jerry Lewis word. Yeah. Um, yeah. He um, was maybe... One of the nicest guys I've ever interviewed. One of the most amiable, would answer any question I asked him. I mean, uh, maybe this is why he was a good crook, you know. Well, he just but but he, he was, was really, be... really, I mean, a nice guy. I'll tell you another guy. You know what's strange? Are guys I want to hate, and then you meet them, and you can't hate them. You want me to tell you one? Hold on to your breath, everybody. And not even Phil and Patrick are going to believe this. Mike, Mike Huckabee, oh, nicest I, Mike guy. Huckabee's a gentleman. Nicest guy in the world, you know. I, and I told him, I said, I think you're full of crap, all right, but I like you, you know. I, I well, wish he'd run. I'd probably vote for him. Well, that's going too far. I mean, I like yeah. him, but I, I don't, I don't want to get butt fucked by him. Okay. Well, I doubt he's going to jail. Who? Did Huck you actually say that, Phil? What? That you'd vote for him? For Huckabee? Huck yeah. Yeah. He's a fucking rhino. <laughs> <laughs> and what are we? Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Since when do you care about rhinos, Patrick? You're, You're the most left-wing right-winger I know. <laughs> yeah, Patrick's the ultimate rhino. Yeah, but there, there are certain stand. I mean... What, well, do you know? have to have your card punched every month? What? I, I, you know, I, I, I think that all you need is a guy that's a stand-up guy that's willing to do the job and can talk to both sides, whether he's a Democrat or a Republican. That's who ought to be in the job. And uh, I think he's a gentleman, and uh, I, I'm, I think that he could probably pull uh, a coalition of people together. Unless yeah, but they I, don't, so I don't, I don't think he could win. I mean, and, and the no. qu and the question, no. who, who I does, voted for Perot too. Who, you know? who does either side have that could win? I mean, I don't think Ryan could win. No. I really don't think he's got a chance. They're talking so, about Romney yes. again, Oish. which, oh. uh, <laughs> no. you know. Um, the, the present lineup is, uh, is pretty weak. Yeah. So you think it's Hillary then? Do you think yeah, it's going to be Hillary? I, you know, I gotta say, I gotta say this. I gotta, I gotta say this about uh, Hillary. But Romney's coming back, they say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who? He gets that stick up his ass. Well, I know, I, I know that, David. That's what I was saying, and uh, that's a sickening idea, Romney coming no, back. No, but I mean, they, I think he, he could lose again, just as well as he lost the last time. I was going to say that's a guaranteed win for your side. Yeah. So. On the other hand, 
I, I got to say about Hillary that she would not be my main choice. Uh, I don't know that she's uh, that winnable. I, she, she's not, not a good campaigner. It, she's not a good campaigner. But and, her husband and, is. And she doesn't have the charm. But say Bill had charm. He still has charm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, right. he, you know, oh, he, he, you know, he could get a, you know, he could get a Republican to blow him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, oh, yeah. he's got that kind of charisma. He did. Yeah. He probably did. He's got that kind of charisma. I've talked to people who've met Bill Clinton and said when you meet him, he said it wasn't he was trying to seduce women. He's trying to seduce anybody he comes in contact with. You know, but she doesn't have that same ability. She's stiff. Uh, she's not particularly attractive on any level, and I'm not saying you know I, I can show you Barbara Boxer. That's that's an attractive older woman. Yeah. You know, uh, what do you mean no? Uh, well, she may be attractive, but Barbara Boxer is is one of the worst senators that uh, this the state of California had ever had. Please, I'm good. I'm, I was good friends with her daughter for years, and you know, uh, and, uh, and, she, and uh, I, and, I, the, and I thought they had a lot. They were lovely people. Who I'm sure she is, but uh, who was the person, the newscaster that she ran against during her first election? He was from L.A. Well, uh, uh, she ran. Yeah, I can't remember. A that. very conservative newscaster. Like an anchor? Oh, oh, yeah, but he was terrible. He was just well, actually he was a stand up guy and she did some dirty tricks at the end of the at the end of the campaign saying that he went into a uh, uh, brothel or a uh, not a brothel, but a, uh, a, a strip, strip club. Yeah. And uh, he, he had too much class to, to answer her, but it cost him the election. Hmm. I can't believe Barbara would do that, though, Bar because Barbara's hey, always Barbara, been. Obviously, Barbara was the first person to ever play dirty tricks. On yeah, yeah, they never do that. <laughs> There was a woman years ago in it's California who ran for before. senator yeah. by the name of Helen Gahagan, who was the star of, I don't know if you remember this movie called She, uh, but it was a film from the 30s or 40s, and she played She. Uh, and uh, uh, she then went on to have a political career, and she ran for, for I think it was running for senator, and then Richard Nixon accused her of being a communist, and it ruined her campaign, and she never survived the election, and he got elected by smearing her. So smearing is, you know, but I don't, I, I just can't imagine Barbara doing that kind of smear. It's not in, that's not in her, uh, 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 it, it definitely uh, was. You know, I well. lived in San Francisco at the time, and uh, was, uh, uh, I, I was supportive of uh, the uh, candidate that was running against her. And for the life of me, uh, I can't remember his name. He passed away a couple of years ago. Yeah. Well, in any event, all I'm saying is that, that uh, Hillary's just not. She's just not. She's uneasy. It's, it, she doesn't. Feel, she doesn't have a. She doesn't have that thing that makes you kind of like her. Have you know, not likable. Q rating. Yeah. 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 Q rating. That'd be a good way of looking at it. Uh, Q rating is something in television where they decide whether you're. You know, people like you or not. Likeability. Likeability. Uh, she even tried during the last Let me throw a name out. Like Let me what? just throw when, a name out. When she in was there. running but, for governor, I yeah. remember that um, when she was, was a governor of New York? Right? She senator. Was no. Senator of no. New York. Senator. Senator. She, the, that year, she was marching in the, um, I think it was the Columbus Day Parade, and I was working on Fifth Avenue right across the street from St. Patrick's Cathedral where the, where the parade went down. And everybody was saying, oh, she's going to be a carpetbagger. She's going to be wearing a Met or a Yankee hat, and she's not from here. And she's just really unpopular. People just don't like her. Well, I, and I think, it's it, it, again, it gets back to that attractiveness. Nobody can hate, look, nobody can hate Bill Clinton. There's just something likable about Bill Clinton, even if you disagree with him politically. Uh, he just has that charisma. She doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it was a family business... Uh, she was the agent. He was the star. Well, you know? in fairness, who does have that kind of charisma? Uh, not many people. Certainly not Mitt Romney. Um, no. I'm going to throw a name into the ring. A Democrat from uh, the state of Maryland, Governor O'Malley. How about him uh, as an alternate to, to uh, Hillary Clinton? All right. You want me to give you the answer why? I've never heard of the guy in my life. You will. <laughs> you will. But then again... 
When when Clinton when Clinton started running, yeah, nobody, nobody had ever heard of him, heard of him either. Exactly. It's you know, point. and maybe it's Obama. Me. Nobody heard of him. Yeah. Well, maybe that's those are the people who can win. The people who don't have so much baggage behind them that they come out of nowhere and people think are very surprised suddenly when they win. I mean, there wasn't the much. Problem is because nobody deal. knows them. They don't really know how to how to game this. The system. I mean, to get uh, done. Uh, uh, when you got to Obama, you got had a guy there with no voting record. You know, there was mm. nothing he was running on. O'Malley rebuilt Baltimore. The yeah. waterfront of Baltimore now is spectacular. Yeah. The ballpark yeah. all the way around the harbor. It's mm -hmm. it's Beautiful. what what he did, and then as governor of Maryland, realized how the close proximity to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. that already exists. Everybody in Washington and in Maryland knows who this guy is. Uh, the rest of the country will will get to know him, and I, I got a feeling he might he might just run, and yeah. I think he'd be a good candidate. Well, you know who knows, but uh, I, I don't I don't know if it's going to be Hillary. I, I really I have my doubts about Hillary being the uh, okay. the nominee oh, of the what party. What about Joe Biden? You know something? Yeah. I like Biden. See. Uh, uh, I, they, I just got a wince from Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. He can't. Why the I, wince? I don't even need to say anything. What do you mean you don't need to say anything? I'm just saying. I, I, I took a shit earlier tonight. I don't need to say any more about that. Yeah, Biden uh, will what? put his foot in his mouth Too at much some of a character. point and, and, and destroy everything. But the that, that, that's the good part about him. Yeah. But he puts He's his smart. foot in his mouth and everybody gets a good joke out of it. But yeah. the fact is... He's Still, as as a political animal, he's pretty good at what he does. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, so so he says stuff he shouldn't say. You know, so what? That doesn't uh, it does, doesn't hurt me. He's doesn't hurt you. President, I mean, it, it, isn't it? it helps. He's more of a he's more good for comedy. Yeah. You know. How would you? Okay. Okay. Let's 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 give it let, let's give it this matchup now. Let's just say Joe Biden versus Mitt Romney. Let's say those are the two outside oh, bets, shit. and somehow Kill they wind up now. running against Kill each other. Biden. Who wins? Biden. Really? I, I, I don't That's think Biden tough. has a lot of respect. I agree. Biden. Biden. You're saying Biden? The Biden. Biden candidate, Dan. Who are you going to write and, in, and, then, Patrick? Who, who would you write in? Uh, I don't Harper know. Boxer. I, I, you, we're two <laughs> I think, I think Lassie could beat Mitt Romney. But I, 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 I think we should vote for uh, Rebel Stoke Jim because, I, quite frankly, I think what America needs as president is a Canadian. That's a great yeah. idea. Thank yeah, you. But, but Jim, too much of a uh, socialist, too much of a... Oh, God. And he got that goddamn beret from Cuba. So, oh. you know, Stupid cigars. <laughs> but that's just what we need is, is a dictator. From Canada running this country. Yeah. We'd yeah. be up all of the, the country in the world constantly. Yeah, no, you, you're right, Miranda. Tell him. Tell him. He he, he apologizes for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Hershenson. Who? Uh, she ran against Bruce Hershenson. Never heard uh, of the guy. Uh, he was the uh, newscaster that ran against uh, Barbara Boxer in her uh, first senatorial run. What, what, you, what year was that? Uh, what, 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 uh, it was in the 80s. It was at this, uh, it might have been 92, because didn't she take Cranston's seat? I, yeah, it was Cranston's yeah. seat, as a matter of fact. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, Bruce Hershenson, he was a yeah. uh, conservative uh, Let me see here. newscaster here, here, here. from I, Southern I, California. I, I bet Phil voted for Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Brain dead. You want to talk? <laughs> brain dead. Right. Davis. No fucking shit. I, I, I can't imagine how. How did you? How long did you live in San Francisco, Phil? He still does. Since uh, well, seventy-four. You still live in San Francisco. Well, we say we live in San Francisco, yeah. but he lives in where Berkeley now. Yeah. And, but you know, I lived in Marin, and people worse. when people would say, I "Where mean, are you from?" I, I go. Can't stand it. You're just surrounded by. By us, uh, yeah, you're uh, in uh, Berkeley. My God, uh, you must be going crazy. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, I've always uh, gone to the beat of a different drummer. <laughs> <laughs> what drummer is that? Uh, the uh, de the Democratic drummer that's uh, that's uh, humming the tunes in my ear. But... Is, is there a Democrat you would vote for? 
Uh, sure. I, I voted for, uh, uh, what's his name, Jerry Brown, uh, when he uh, ran for the Oakland uh, mayor. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I voted for him for attorney general. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I'll probably vote for him uh, governor. Mm -hmm. Because, you know what I was doing? I was watching MSNBC today, and somebody, one of the commentators, had on a Republican, and he was asking him about, like, the fact that they caught the guy who was involved in the Benghazi thing and about uh, what the president's plans are, you know. Uh, Christine, we can't, we can, we can we put her on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, we can't. Sorry, oh, Christine. Oh. I gotta get going. You got to get going. Okay, Jim. I just, before I go, though, oh, I want to say hello and goodbye to Mr. Love because I haven't seen him since your apartment in yeah. like 2000 in San Francisco. Wow. Right. Okay. And, and he was so nice. He sang into my microphone back. It wasn't connected to anything, but he sang into it anyway. So Yeah. Hold up the microphone again so he can see it. You want me to sing again? Uh, I used to visit all the very gay places, those come what may places, where one relaxes on the axes of the wheel of life to get the feel of life from jazz and cocktails. Okay. Great song. We'll see you later, Jim. That's great. Okay, He's got to go get ready to do his show. Uh, let's see. And do Christina? we? Uh, well, Christine, I, I answered, but she didn't. Uh, she didn't uh, stay on long enough, or something. So you know. Uh, uh, can oh, I man. ask Buddy a question? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, did you know uh, Peter Minton? Yeah, I, I know. I know of him. I uh, certainly um, have enjoyed his talents numerous times, and I, I do know him on a personal level. Yes. Yeah, he used to uh, play at the Florida Lee on yeah. Sutter Street. Yeah, he used to uh, also play up the Huntington Hotel. He used to play. Right, that's his, and, that was Maurice's brother. Uh, and, and and then played um, in the oh god that room at the Fairmont that was oh, they closed well, probably twelve years. Nobody ago. knows They're, what either yeah. of you are talking about. So yeah. well, uh, the the only reason I mention it yeah. is that Peter Minton used to play at the Florida Lee, and it's now closing. Yeah, I know. By the way, there are five minutes left in the show. And Christine calls. Hello, Christine. I, hi, guys. I did leave early to come in. Yeah. It took me an hour and 45 minutes to go to my office to the bridge in San Francisco tonight. Really? Oh, oh my God. Wow. Are you still, are you still there? Because you were breaking up. No, I'm here now. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're breaking up. I'll go up into with, the closet. She's going to go into her closet because she gets yeah. good reception <laughs> oh, in the I closet. Um... Well, you know, she's San Franciscan. Hmm? The, uh, Christine is from San Francisco. Why? Why? Because she's in the closet? Yeah. No, oh, I see. It's, uh, <laughs> come out of the closet, Christina. You're killing yeah. me. Uh, actually, now it works, doesn't it? Yeah, you're there. Yeah, yeah it does so work perfectly. If you heard, hey, do you want to comment on any of the things we've been saying? Because it's almost time to go. Well, okay, so I'm getting Dan. Call in. Call in. I'm like, I'm in my car. Well, you can call from your car. Oh, no. No, I have to have my music. Oh, you have to have your music in the car? So you don't, oh, you don't, music. well, then, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said we were saying call in, and you said you heard us saying that, but then you said you have to have your music. So no, how no, are you no, having Dan your music was, and your Dan Alex, Dan was sending too? me messages. Huh? Yeah. I was sending her mental messages. Psychic messages? Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah. Psychic messages. So <laughs> It's like you had me stressed out, Dan. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you any uh, distress. So I heard you guys talked about pot stories. I only have one. What? What, what is the one pot story? It was when I first, I was young, and we, we used to go to a club in Berkeley called the Berkeley Square. Yeah. And actually, you could get stoned in there and not get caught. And my friend brought some stuff back from Amsterdam, and we did that, and I ended up literally laying down in the middle of the dance floor and falling asleep and my friends uh -oh. basically threw their coats and purses on me and danced around me for two hours what what year was this <laughs> what year is this, uh, buddy? 1988 89 oh. wow were you going to clubs back then yeah, yeah. were you going to the club scene uh you know like did you go to the paradise lounge yes all the time did you come and see the buddy love show there Buddy, I saw you so many times. Oh, yeah, God bless you. you. I would see you, and I would go to Alex's Bennett's with uh, breakfast with Bennett's for you. 
There you go. See? So, so she, and Supper with Schwartz. A big fan from way back. Supper with <laughs> Schwartzman, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Alex knew me when I was 17. See, I told you Miranda I used to be a big shot. He was. <laughs> I never doubted you. <laughs> Actually, Miranda, those shows were epic. They were. Listen. Yeah, they were epic. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we're uh, we're getting down to the uh, the end of the show. Actually, I, I could even start running the theme a little bit. It's great having you here tonight, boy. Full house, uh, uh, Miranda. As always, you know we love your show. Uh, you're doing just such a wonderful job. You have a great radio voice, by the way. Thank I know you. I know guys that pine over it, and and a few <laughs> women too. And uh, Phil, thank you so much. We'll see. I should be back in the Bay Area on Monday. Uh, it'll be Tuesday, Monday. I'll still be flying. This will still be flying. Okay. It's a pretty uh, slow plane. You're pretty slow uh, it's, a, plane. it's a late flight. <laughs> David, thank you as always. Love talking to you, David. Thank you, you Alex. You're, you're not only smart but funny. And uh, Christina, thank you for the uh, – Christine, rather, for the f few minutes you could spend with us. Dan Meyer, Josh Wheeler, haven't heard much from you tonight, but I hope you've enjoyed being here. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mark Thorner, you've been a little quiet too, but yeah. always nice having you here. Patrick, uh, you, you know what? I can't say enough about you, uh, so I won't. And uh, to Rob, <laughs> thank you, Rob, as always, for all the work you do here. And of course, everybody, tune in for his, uh, his uh, GabNet Rewind programs all weekend long. He gets more hours on this uh, channel than any of us. Uh, and he'll, uh, he'll be on with his. Uh, uh, Rob Alfano's GabNet Rewind shows. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. I, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. Uh, we'll see you again on Monday. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Rebel Stoke Jim is next over most of the same station. I'm running a little late, so if I, you know, I'll just say if you see her, tell her I love her. <laughs>